I um, was studying the story of Joseph and how his brother's anger against Joseph, mm -hmm. and it stemmed a lot from jealousy, you know, because I mean, Joseph was yeah. the, the favorite child. And also Joseph apparently got this lavish, lavish gift called a robe, which signaled he wasn't going to have to go out and work like his brothers were. Yeah. And so there was a lot going on. There was mm -hmm. anger. There was envy. There was jealousy. There was strife there. Maybe Joseph flaunted it a little bit, too, every now and then. Yeah. So. You know what? Sometimes younger no, children okay. I mean, really kids, don't right. have to work hard like us oldest children. But that's that a story the for another day. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> but as I was reading that and I saw the progression mm. where the brother's anger did turn into an eventual plot to kill him, I just thought that's so severe. But what that tells me is there's never just a little bit of anger. Yeah. yeah. There's never just a little bit of jealousy. There's never just a little bit of envy and strife. Those things grow unattended in our heart. They grow. And I know from some of the research we've looked at, I also think probably from John Gottman is one of the number one killers of a relationship is simmering resentment. Mm -hmm. Now, and, and Duke University, by the way, not far from where we are, did a study way, way back, goes into the 80s, uh, that they did a study that they found empirically that the number one killer in America was unforgiveness. Now, you have a best-selling book on forgiveness, right? Because that unforgiveness, there is anger, and far more than that, there's just this rage, I will not forgive you for what you've done. Vengeance is mine, saith me. So they did a study in the somatic, that's the word for body, mm -hmm. but people are like, I'm not forgiving. That's just you drinking poison, expecting somebody else to get sick. Doesn't work. Right. It kills people. I actually think that the Joseph narrative embodies that specifically. Think about really? this. Joseph is thrown into the pit, right? And what do his brothers do while he's in the pit? They plot. They plot. And the Texas, they're eating. Yeah. They're having a meal <laughs> while homeboy's in a pit. So again, we, sometimes we got to take, this is something that you've taught me, Liz. Like, like, put yourself in the human situation. Yeah. You're Joseph in the pit. You're like, my brothers have just jacked me up most severely, and now they're enjoying the food, and I can smell the food and hear them chewing and eating and the whole nine yards, and now I'm going to be taken away. Okay, all that happened. So the, the simmering resentment, right? Where is the context that Joseph forgives? In front of a table Ooh. with food. Wow. In a banquet. Where the brothers are asking. Where the bro the whole thing has been put. And I think that Joseph really does. I think because, you know, music does this in terms of our senses. It draws us back to places of trauma. Yeah, so yeah. here's food. Here are the brothers. They're chomping on their food. I think Joseph's like, oh, my gosh. This and now the position has been flipped. Mm -hmm. I'm not in the, in the prison. I'm a prince of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And now what am I going to do? And it's in that same context of that anger and of that, like all the things that happened, that forgiveness actually takes place. You know, don't you, this isn't a Hollywood movie, but following that, I've often thought if it was some movie and it was retribution or justice at the end of it, and Joseph said, you bunch of losers, this is who I really am, and I'm going to kill you, there'd be a number of people, I'm not so sure a number of Christians, but in our culture right now in America, it serves him right, he was right to do that. Mm. He got him back, I'm like, whoa, 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 to dial that back, what do we learn in Genesis 50, 20, which you've alluded to it, that's uh, that's uh, not my way often as a human, mm -hmm. is for vengeance, and yet God's ways are higher. But I think there'd be people who would say, yeah, serves them right. I'm like, that's a, there's a different story here, isn't mm -hmm. there? And from Genesis 37 to Genesis 50, there's a lot of development of Joseph's the calling, character um, our character yes. to develop, yep. you know, he, yes. his, his character is developed to match his calling. Yes. And then toward the end, the, of, of a lot of maturity. He's 17 when the story starts. And toward the end, as we get to Genesis 50, 20, a lot of time has passed. Yeah. A lot of other things have passed. And I think it's not time that heals all wounds, but it's the what we plant in the soil of that time that mm -hmm. determines if we heal or not. And of course, we see Joseph's story turns and he doesn't have simmering resentments. He has struggles with forgiving the brothers. He is He's hurt. He acknowledges that they hurt him. But we eventually get to Joseph saying, you intended to harm me. He doesn't yeah, sugarcoat that. No, that's true. He's like, you did intend to harm me. That's good. But God, and I like this turn of events, you know, where you see but God and things turn because there's another perspective operating at the same time. You intended to harm me. 
but God intended it for good to accomplish something, to accomplish what is being done, the saving of many lives. 